Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, today is Monday, May 18th, uh, and this is day 39, believe it or not, uh, of virtual learning, but there's only 15 days left. Uh, and this video is for my financial literacy class. Uh, good morning, guys. Hope you are all doing well. Hope you guys got to enjoy what a great weather weekend we just had. Uh, hopefully, you're kind of out and about and getting getting some stuff done. So uh, today's video, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what the uh, expectation for this week is, the assignments for this week. Uh, and then I'm actually going to give you a little bit of a, I guess you want to say a lesson, but I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about the last video that you guys are going to be watching this week uh, on opportunity cost. Okay. Um, so before we get to all that, I'll explain the assignment. And, and then later on in the video, you can pause this uh, and you can come back to it at the end of the week if you want. Um, when, or you can watch beforehand, whatever you want to do, um, when you get to the opportunity cost video by Dave Ramsey. So a couple of things. First things first, housekeeping stuff. Uh, I've gone through, uh, I've looked at all of your watching, your viewing histories uh, on the course through the course here. Uh, and I've also gone through all of your assignments. And I just want to let you know that some of you I haven't heard from or seen in the last couple of weeks. Um, so I'm going to be sending out another round of emails to both students uh, and to some parents uh, just because I'm a little concerned and I just want to make sure everything is okay, especially since we only have three more weeks here um, of class. I want to wrap all this stuff up. I don't want to be chasing everybody for assignments. So I'm not going to be giving you guys any more written assignments that you need to turn in for the class. Okay, you're done. You've met you've met all of the requirements for me. Uh, now I'm just going to have you guys watch some stuff, uh, do some things that are practical and, and hopefully something that you can kind of take away from the course. So if I haven't heard from you, you know, you haven't done all the assignments or haven't been keeping up with the textbook please, please, please either shoot me an email directly, get out in front of it, uh, or just kind of get this stuff done. Uh, with that being said, this week, I'm not assigning any new written work, okay? I'm asking that you spend this week cleaning up all of the previous assignments and post-tests uh, that you might have done. Up until this last chapter, almost a majority of you, except for four of you, um, have completed all of the Dave Ramsey um requirements, if you will, and all of those assignments. So um, thank you to those who have been kind of keeping up with everything, turning all of your assignments in. I appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who are done with everything, uh, after you watch two videos and you listen to me talk a little bit about opportunity cost, you're done for the week. Uh, so hopefully you guys can enjoy the week and get ready for Memorial Day weekend, uh, especially since the beaches, New Jersey should be open. So that's kind of exciting. All right. So for this week, what I would like you to do very, very simple. Uh, I want you to watch two videos. So I want you to watch uh, video um, 2.1 uh, on buyer's remorse. And I would like you to watch video 3.1 on opportunity cost. And that's it. You don't even have to do the post test this week. I can see who watches what videos and, and things like that. So um, you don't even have to, to complete the post test this week. That is fine. Uh, after this, I'm going to be talking to you about opportunity cost to go along with what Dave Ramsey has to say. And, and I think these two videos, albeit aren't too lengthy, it's a, probably take you about 35 minutes of your, of your time. Okay, um, These two videos probably have some of the best information in terms of controlling your own individual behavior uh, when trying to buy things that are wants and things that are necessities and things like that. Um, so that is what I have for you this week. Um, that's all of the information I've got. If you have any questions, as always, please reach out. I'll have office hours this Thursday from 1130 to 12. I'll put the Zoom link up on Google Classroom for you. Um, and that's it. Okay. So at this point, you have a choice. You can either pause the video, go do the Dave Ramsey stuff, then come back. Or you can just kind of listen to what I have to say. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about opportunity cost. Now, this week in the videos, Dave Ramsey is going to talk to you about buyer's remorse and opportunity cost. Buyer's remorse is probably one of my favorite things to talk about because it's one of the things that most of us at some point or time uh, in our consumer history, if you will, are going to experience. There are things that I have purchased um, that I've regretted wholeheartedly. Uh, and, and I'll be honest, the first car um, my wife and I ever purchased. So it was my wife's first brand new car. She was really, really excited about it. Um, we went to the dealership uh, and she just saw the car. She drove it and she really didn't care uh, about a lot of what people had to say. She just wanted the car, right? And so we go back and we negotiate and I sit there and I'm talking like, I, I don't, for whatever reason, I just didn't like the deal or, but you know, I got the puppy dog eyes really excited first big job so we went back we bought the car 
And that was the first real major big purchase that I had um, where I, th I truly experienced buyer's remorse. Uh, as I sat down and I looked more into the deal, and this is where I really learned a lot about car deals, um, I, I just realized we way, way, way overpaid um, for the car, but my wife was happy, uh, and that's all that really mattered at that time. Since then, obviously, we've we've done a little bit. We negotiate cars a little bit differently, um, but it's a learning experience. And there's like this this pit, right? There's an actual physical feeling that you get, like you have this pit in your stomach. You just feel regret and remorse. Uh, and the larger the sum of money that you spend based on your financial situation, the worse you could actually feel. Uh, so everybody can experience buyer's remorse. So your income bracket just depends on what the size of the purchase is. Okay. Um, so I think that's a great video for him. And then he talks about opportunity cost. Now, he uses opportunity cost in a different way than I normally teach about it because this is uh, a fundamental concept in economics. Uh, and so opportunity cost, by definition, is what we call the value of the choice that we missed out on. Now, when I teach this in economics, I normally like to use LeBron James as a great example of someone okay, who has an opportunity cost um, and we kind of talk about his opportunity cost. So LeBron James is one of the last athletes uh, in the NBA to be able to make that jump directly from high school to the pros. Okay, uh, And so he chose to forego a collegiate education, a college degree, to go to the NBA. Um, now, when we look at this, every decision has some type of cost to it. Every decision has some type of trade-off. In LeBron James's situation... He chose to go directly to the NBA to make millions of dollars. And in exchange, the value of what he lost out on was his degree, right? His actual academic degree, his collegiate education. Um, however, we might look at that decision in a very, very different lens. Uh, for a lot of us, including myself, it's a no-brainer. I mean, he received a $99 million endorsement contract, and he never stepped foot on a court um, and he was 18 years old. Uh, I don't know about you, um, but majority of us are not going to be presented with an opportunity to create generational wealth um, before we're 20 years old. So I think he made the right choice. However, the opportunity cost of his choice was, well, he missed out on education and any other potential um, careers he might have sought. So, you know, take the example, what if LeBron James got hurt early in his career and he lost a lot of that money due to certain clauses in his contract? That would be a hefty opportunity cost. Luckily for him, uh, everything's worked out pretty good. And now he's actually, the irony in this whole situation is his uh, understanding of the importance of value of education and how he invested uh, in like what looks like the coolest school ever, okay, in the I Promise School. So that's opportunity cost. It's the value of the decision that we didn't make, right? The value of what we missed out on. Uh, and so when we talk about opportunity cost and we try to take that economic concept and we put it towards personal financial behavior, some of these things start to make sense. So one of the things that Dave Ramsey does says is if you want to buy something, you're really, really excited, fight that impulsivity, just sleep on it, right? There's going to be more of them available. There's not only one of anything made. And obviously there are certain things that have limited editions, whatever it might be, but sleep on it. Really, really think about, do I need this? Can I afford to spend on this? And what am I giving up to get it, right? And that is the opportunity cost. What am I giving up to obtain this thing right now? And one of the things I will say is that buyer's remorse no longer exists when you feel like what you're giving up to obtain what you want isn't much, right? Then you don't feel like that big, it's that big of a deal because you're not giving up a lot to obtain it, all right? So another concept in economics that we talk about, okay, that kind of ties in with all of this is the idea of what we call elasticity. Now, I'm not going to get too crazy into it, but elasticity is just the, how sensitive the demand for a good is when we change price. Right. So I'll give you an example. Um, Mercedes Benz. Right. I think we can all agree Mercedes Benz is one of the premier car makers uh, in the United States or sorry, in the world. I shouldn't say the United States in the world. OK. And so if the Mercedes Benz, I don't know, uh, I don't know much about Mercedes because I'm a teacher, uh, but say the Mercedes Benz E-Class, uh, if it still exists, goes on sale and it becomes a thirty thousand dollar car uh, at its base model. You've now reduced the price of Mercedes Benz cars dramatically, which means that more people have access and availability to purchase that good. 
So demand for that good is actually going to be really, really elastic because it stretches, right? The elasticity just means, well, how much is demand going to stretch based on a change in price? If we drop the price of a Mercedes by an exorbitant amount and more people can now buy the good, then the demand for that good is elastic. Well, what the heck does that mean with what Dave Ramsey is talking about, opportunity cost and buyer's remorse? Majority of the purchases that we are going to make that we're really going to think about kind of fall into this category of goods that are really, really elastic or goods that their demand will stretch as they become more affordable. And there's a couple scenarios we're going to talk about. First is the Mercedes scenario, and that's a luxury. When luxuries become cheap, everybody wants to buy them. Well, why? Well, because they were a luxury initially. Not everybody could afford it, and not everybody was willing to pay that amount for the good. But as the price comes down, more people are willing to buy that good. So Dave Ramsey's advice would be, well, if you want a luxury, wait till it goes on sale. Save some money, then you can buy it when it's a more affordable, and the opportunity cost or the value of what you're giving up is going to be way, way less. Okay. Second thing, now goods that are durable. Right, So goods that we get a ton of use out of, a uh, great example, televisions, washing machines, uh, appliances, things like that, things that we don't replace all of the time. When the price of these goods drop, more people buy them. They're very, very sensitive to changes in price. Let's use televisions because that's really, really relevant. There are a couple times throughout the year where TVs are the cheapest. Okay. One is Black Friday. However, on Black Friday, you're typically getting older model goods. You're not getting the newer stuff, right? The newer stuff is going to come out after Black Friday um, before the next great time to buy a television, and that's after Super Bowl Sunday, right? Majority of people are going to have Super Bowl parties. They're going to buy their TV before the Super Bowl. If you don't want last year's model on sale and clearance for Black Friday and you want the new model, you're going to buy it between Black Friday and and the Super Bowl. That's a three-month period where televisions are going to be at their highest price. Once Super Bowl is over, TVs actually start to gradually decline okay, in their market price, which means as they come down, more and more people come to market and they buy the good. So for you, if you really want a television, you don't want to experience buyer's remorse, Black Friday, day after, months after Super Bowl, TVs get cheaper, that's when you should buy them, okay? Uh, and the last thing is goods that require a large percentage of your income. As you get older and you have to start spending larger chunks of the money that you either have or don't have because now you have to get loans, the buyer's remorse and the opportunity cost increases dramatically. Uh, as you get older and you have more responsibilities, have a family, these financial decisions no, no longer impact just yourself, but they impact your family as well. So the weight in which we make these decisions okay, becomes greater. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Buying a car, which you guys just did an exercise on buying a car okay, yourself. Buying a house. Talk a little bit about home loans and mortgages. I'll probably talk about that with you guys next week. Okay, When you do these things, the cheaper these things get, the easier it is for us to commit money and not feel remorse to it because we're giving up less to obtain them. As you get older, when things like buying a house, there are so many variables that you need to account for and think about that when you're ready to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay, you, you have to be ready to give up quite a bit for it. And the question then becomes, well, how much am I giving up? Do I want all of the house in the world and then nothing and not be able to afford anything to furnish it uh, or to do anything with it? Uh, or do I want a smaller house? It, whatever it might be, this is, these are things that you're going to have to decide on. Hopefully this course, the Dave Ramsey Personal Finance, has actually kind of given you a little bit of a roadmap. Uh, I know for me personally, prior to teaching financial literacy uh, and doing and going through the Dave Ramsey okay, uh, personal finance steps, that some of these things I, I didn't know right away, and I kind of had to figure out the hard way. Uh, to be honest, the first one was the emergency fund. My wife and I got married. We moved in together. We bought a home. The, the first thing that we realized is, man, Stuff happens, like these unexpected expenses happen. And instead of trying to put everything on credit cards and then accrue interest that gets compounded monthly, we decided, you know what? We need to start a fund that if anything happens, we can just take cash from that fund. You don't have to worry about it. You sleep much, much better at night. So I know right now in context of a 15, 16, 17 year old kid, this is probably not something you're really thinking about, but hopefully you take this serious enough because it's gonna give you a roadmap to help you understand and how to make better financial decisions in the future, okay? 
So that's all I have for you on opportunity cost. Hopefully you kind of understand the concept. Dave Ramsey does a really, really good job of trying to turn that really kind of uh, bland economics term uh, into something that can be applied to you in real life uh, for you right now and how it kind of pertains to that buyer's remorse and how we can reduce one by reducing the cost of the other. Okay. Hope you guys are doing really well. Have a great Memorial Day week uh, and weekend rather, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Have a good one.